estimates that there's going to be about 2 billion euro of SSIA money plowing into property. But with borrowings, that's going to swell up to 9 billion. That's a lot of property. So we'll be buying up everything from Fincas in Spain to fixer uppers in Romania. And what's been happening over the last number of years? Well, there's been a huge rise in equity values on Irish homes. And coupled with low interest rates, we set out to conquer Europe. And this thing then took hold that, you know, property was the all weather asset class. It would only ever keep rising and nothing else. Well, let me give you a prediction. This is going to be the graveyard for an awful lot of SSIA money because there's no more rising tide lifting all boats. You now have to be really smart and careful with your moolah. So what's driving the frenzy to go foreign? Well, at the very worst, it's envy and it's craving and it's greed if we were honest with ourselves about it. For example, you open up the newspaper and you see some fat cat is after making 10 million euro on a hotel in London and it doesn't bother you. But when Flintstone next door makes 40 grand in Bulgaria, you just can't sleep. <laughs> it's crippling you. I mean, Flintstone is not exactly the sharpest pencil in the box. <laughs> you often look at him and you say, well, God almighty, if his IQ drop by 1%, you'd have to water him. <laughs> oh, of course, there's a difference. There's a difference between craving and envy. Craving is when you want the Bulgarian pad for yourself, and envy is when you hate the sight of Flintstone for having it. <laughs> but the SIA opportunity is an opportunity for a lot of people to get in on the game. And while there are astute investments to be found, it's also fertile ground for the hucksters, the dodgy sale people who will sell you something at a rip-off price. And of course, lots of us will still invest, even if it's off plans, even if we've never visited the place, even if we've never heard of it. So I thought I'd test our appetite for destruction and take it one step further and see if I could get people to invest in a place that doesn't even exist. <laughs> so I headed off to Newbridge as Finton, a washed up salesman, with my tasty assistant Nicky to flog property in a place called Bergamascus <laughs> at 20 grand a go. Now I knew if it was myself they'd smell a rat. So I had to go undercover, and my false teeth, my beard, and my acting were about as dodgy as the deal I was offering. Get away. We'll leave the city folk. They'll have to stay. Don't have the back thing. Just get away. Gotta go. Get away. Have you been to the agent? No. Yeah, it's an island called Bergamascus. Right. It's about two hours by boat trip from Piraeus. Right. which is the port city of Athens. The units would be for sale quite cheaply, about 20,000 euros, for an 850 square foot apartment. That's excluding the balcony. And it's an incredibly beautiful island, amazing. 32 kilometers of beautiful beaches, 16 hours of sunshine a day. There's um, Greek puffins, there's macaque monkeys. Well, so far, so good. Nix and I could pull a crowd. But how would they react when they heard about the setbacks in Bergamascus? particular type of mosquito, nasty one. It was malarial psychosis, okay, but it has been treated. They've um, sprayed all the swamp plants and they've also treated people with um, viral tablets. So it's pretty much eradicated, but again, there's a slight chance. So do you think Irish still... people would find that as a problem? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you see, see that as a barrier? You think that what could people offer? Well, for us it would anyway. Yes, so right, yeah. For you it would, it definitely would yeah. You'd be prone to um, you reaction, would, yeah. would you? Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. really like, I wouldn't like the idea of it for a yes. start. You know. yeah. If then, to avoid any taxation problem, you had to surrender your Irish passport and become a Greek citizen? No. You wouldn't do that either? No. At the moment, you have to get there by sea from Prayers. Oh. And to get to Prayers, you have to go to Birmingham and then it's get Birmingham. flight to London, get a London flight to Frankfurt, you skip from Frankfurt to Athens, and then you get the boat Very from Prayers. You yeah. get a bus from, from Athens to Prayers, and then the ferry. Beautiful, though. So it's, it's quite a journey. Right. Yeah. And the trip would last about a week. About a week. About a week. Good. So you'll get all the details on the website. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much nice for dropping by. Nice to meet you. Nice of course, they were very polite in New York. <laughs> I mean, the punters did very well with a lousy trip to Bergamascus. <laughs> and of course, the disease flies. And singing the national anthem, the Greek national anthem in the Irish Embassy in Athens. <laughs> but I thought I'd push them a little bit further with one small little drawback, what the locals call the big bloody volcano. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where I'm gonna go when the volcano blows. 
Now, one of the concerns we had was the background to the island is rather unusual. There was, there was an earthquake and a lava flow there around the, during the Tudor times, about 1534, and it created kind of a lava plain. And the island is uh, lost its inhabitants at the time, but of course it's been inhabited ever since. We were just concerned that the Irish might be a bit queasy about being in an earthquake zone. Do you think they would be? No, I wouldn't think so. Would you know? no, I would. Now, Greek scientists reckon that it's unlikely to happen within the next century or so, but there is a probability there. Would you see that as being off-putting for people? No, not for me. Wouldn't it? No, not really. Would you be uncomfortable living in a zone that had volcanic activity? Yeah. Why? In case it exploded. <laughs> now, there would be an evacuation yeah. plan for the island. Very good, yeah. How fast would it be? Very fast. <laughs> yeah. Very fast. What would you require then in a Greek island? What would be your idea? No volcano. No volcano. There's a probability of about 23.45% that there could be an eruption within the next 124 years, according to the Greek scientists. You won't see that. He knows all No, but that doesn't mean it could happen any minute. No, no, it doesn't mean. It doesn't mean that. The probability of it happening per minute is much lower. And would you go underground potholing around a volcanic area? Because there's a lot of that. Well, it wouldn't go potholing. Like, but go we'd... down into caves, yeah. you see. Into caves under yeah. the volcano. Yeah. Like, you wouldn't, yeah. wouldn't go potholing. Yeah. Wouldn't go potholing. That's a totally different thing. Yeah. So, provided you could get out quite quickly then. Yeah. And you think you'd be able to run faster than a lava flow if there was a problem? Depends on the speed of the lava flow. Because as you get older, your ability to move is restricted. Yeah, well, I can't move very fast. <laughs> so, do you don't think you'd be able to outrun a volcano no. then? I think it depends on the flow of lava. Yeah, exactly. Depends on how fast it is. Yeah, the, the average flow of lava is only about four miles an hour. Is that what it is? <laughs> Thank you. So, seems I was outwitted by the only man in Ireland that knew the speed of a lava flow. <laughs> anyway. On a serious point, a lot of people are going to invest in foreign property anyway, so what are the golden rules? Well, the first thing is trust absolutely no one. Cross-check every single piece of information that you get. Forget Flintstone next door. Don't cog another boy's homework hoping he's smarter than you. And here's the acid test, for God's sake, don't do it. Don't do it if it eats up all of your stash on your borrowing on your Irish home. And particularly, you know that if the rent doesn't materialize, it's going to eat into your wages. So, so much.